So yeah, together with me here are um, Roberta, who is the technical lead, and um, Simran, who is our capacity building lead. And we will give you an overview of yeah, the project context, um, as well as uh, yeah, tell you a little bit about what the incubator program is about and what the curriculum roughly looks like. And then you will have an app tour um, given by Roberta towards the end. And you also will have the floor to ask questions at the end. And we invite you to send in or type in the questions over the course of the entire webinar in the chat. We will collect those and then answer all of them towards the end. And yes, so um, as Thomas mentioned, we have been implementing this project uh, so far in uh, India and in Nigeria. Uh, for this, we partnered with EMPA, which is the Swiss research organization, um, data.org, a US-based philanthropy, and then the German Development Corporation, um, Deutsche Gesellschaft für Internationale Zusammenarbeit. And uh, the Indian project was funded by data.org and the, the Nigerian one by the German um, cooperation. So now I want to give the floor to Simran, who will now give you an overview of the project. Over to you, Simran. Thank you, Selena. Uh, so before we give you uh, a tour of the OVCC solution, uh, I would like to um, share with you the context in which this project was developed. Uh, as can be seen from... Okay, sorry. Uh, so as can be seen from these graphics, uh, the two countries that we're working on are India and Nigeria. And approximately 70% of population is country um, are farmers. Approximately 80% Small farms, meaning that they work on two hectares of land. It's really important over here. Um, yeah. We have some so, issues, but. Okay, uh, I think there's there's some mic issues, uh, and I'm, I'm sorry, but um, can we go to the previous slide, please? Yeah. Um, so though, even though like uh, agricultural policy in the past couple of years has primarily focused on increasing agricultural yield, and even though this is important and the FAO also notes that you will have to increase uh, we have to increase our food production by approximately 70 percent to avoid an acute hunger crisis uh, just increasing agricultural production will not be sufficient uh, to maintain nutritional and food security because approximately 40 percent of the food that's produced in developing countries gets lost uh, during the post harvest phase and this leads to farmers losing at least more than 15% of their income. Uh, the problems that they face are twofold. The first is that when farmers harvest their crops uh, and when they have to store and sell these crops um, uh, at ambient temperature, uh, the quality deter deteriorates extremely quickly and they settle for extremely low prices that are offered to them at the end of the day. And the second is that uh, because farmers do not have a guaranteed means of storing their uh, crops in the post-harvest phase, um, they want to liquidate it quickly. So a lot of um, middlemen or intermediaries come to farmers during the beginning of the sowing season and offer them um, poor rates for their crops. And most farmers settle for this uh, because they want the immediate cash. And so, a large portion of the profit from the agriculture production gets uh, accumulated in the hands of the intermediaries. Even when cold storage solutions do exist, they're mostly centralized, meaning that they're located in big cities. 
and serve for a single commodity, which means that um, they, uh, they are uh, particularly for uh, crops that get exported or are distributed by the central government. And with our solution, what we're trying to do is move towards decentralized cooling and multi-commodity storage. In most of, the, uh, of global south, uh, multi-cropping is the most common means of agricultural production since many households grow for subsistence as well. And there's also a vast heterogeneity across uh, farms within a given region. So centralized cooling and cooling for just one commodity does not work in rural areas. As I also previously mentioned, most of these uh, cool rooms are located in big cities. And a lot of the farmers do not have access uh, to transportation to get their crops to big cities, especially women. And even when they are able to transport their goods to big cities, since they're not able to monitor the quality of their products, they're often told by the traders or the middlemen taking their crops to the centralized uh, coal rooms that their crops face damage and they had to sell the crops for lower prices. So because of such narratives, a lot of um, smallholder farmers or farmers in general have uh, started losing faith in cooling solutions. So this is what we're trying to do with your VCCA. First, move to decentralized cooling. Uh, decentralized cooling allows for tapping into solar energy to uh, power the cold rooms and to build trust in cooling solutions again using um, digitalization. So the your VCCA solution has two components. The first being a business model known as servitization or uh, the case where instead of selling the product, you sell the service offered by the product, in this case, cooling. So instead of in investing upfront in cold rooms, now um, farmers can access cooling uh, based on the amount of goods that they store uh, in the room. So pay per day uh, uh, based on the amount of food that's stored inside. And this requires them to not put in any of their own money. So there's no upfront investment. Uh, and they also do not have to take on the risk that comes with such investments. The ownership of the cold rooms is retained by the technology providers who own uh, the uh, room, but also maintain it. And the second component is digitalization. So we're working towards, we have developed an open access data science-based mobile application, which um, helps farmers uh, with decision-making through different features, which we will dive into later. And the overall aim of the project is to increase access to sustainable cooling, help farmers uh, with post-harvest decision-making, minimize food loss, and maximize farmer income. Um, currently, uh, as mentioned, we have, we have worked in India and Nigeria, uh, and these are our pilot sites. So Himachal, Bihar, and Orissa in India, and Kano, Imo, and Plateau in Nigeria. And we have also mentioned some of our local partners who have also been able to join us on call today. And here are some of the pictures from um, our field visits working with um, uh, on the pilot site. So as you can see, most of these cooling solutions are containerized, uh, decentralized rooms in uh, rural areas. And here we're also seeing how we're helping uh, operators connect sensors in the room. And we will see why these sensors are important um, as we progress in um, the webinar. One thing that we've kept in mind is that we have tried to test the app multiple times with farmers and operators. So the changes in the app and the way it's been developed is informed by several feedback loops. And here are just of uh, some of the pictures of our surveys, workshops, and feedback collection. Um, before we can um, go into a detailed tour of the incubator and the app itself, um, I would like to tell you that we have an app called Cultivate, uh, bringing together the words cultivate and um, cold storage. And it's designed for two main users, 
the first being the cooling companies or the operators. Um, and the app helps them with digital inventory management. So a lot of the cold rooms and that depend on manual registers can now move to digital inventory management to reduce um, errors in the check-in and check-out processes, helping with remote monitoring of temperature in the cold rooms. Uh, along with that, the remote monitoring of revenue and occupancy rates of the cold rooms. And these uh, measures help companies uh, make their operations more efficient and the efficiency helps them scale up their, uh, we hope helps scale up their um, cooling rooms to more areas. And for the cooling users, um, it includes features such as um, learning about the benefits of cooling, uh, being able to track the shelf life of their crops, which helps build trust in cooling solutions and also uh, different features which help them make informed decisions about when and where to sell their produce. With that, I pass the word to Selena to take us through the incubator program. Thank you, Simran. Um, yeah, so after having piloted the solution in India and uh, Nigeria, we collected and integrated all the learnings uh, to, to now uh, move forward and open up the incubator program to, um, yeah, to now implement the solution uh, with uh, more operators. And yeah, um, the, the program is for all technology providers who are offering renewable energy um, uh, cold room, well, renewable energy power cold rooms or with other, um, renewable hybrid systems and um, that are focusing on helping smallholder farmers to, to access agricultural cold chains. And um, the program is open to any um, uh, technology provider in uh, a non-OECD country and who are yeah, willing to or interested in, in implementing the servitization business model and uh, to, to use digitalization or, or specifically the Cultivate app to, um, to increase the access uh, of users to cold rooms. And moving on. Uh, so why would you be interested in applying to this program? There are several benefits that you will um, yeah, receive, such as um, technical assistance, whereby we will uh, support you in implementing a servitization business model to your specific needs and context, as well as we will help you to adapt um, the Cultivate app to actually fit to the company needs that you're having. So for this, you will yeah, have um, several individual sessions uh, where we will um, support you in, in yeah, for completing these steps. And uh, another key benefit is that uh, yeah, we will have uh, several case studies and articles um, published on, uh, yeah, for example, success stories where we uh, will, um, yeah, basically write articles on, on um, what you have done and how the, how the uh, yeah, incubator program has been implemented with your, with your um, company and uh, yeah, put this um, or disseminate this uh, across our network. And then you will also gain overall access to our um, broad network in the cold chain landscape. And um, yeah, these are, these are a few benefits and there are a couple of more which we will tell you about uh, yeah, once you joined and moving on. Um, this is the incubator curriculum. Um, roughly, we will tailor this later on once uh, the companies are selected more specifically to, to individual company needs. Um, but basically this is a three month program whereby we will have weekly sessions. Um, the first yeah, session will be uh, yeah, just the onboarding. Um, then we will have 
Uh, we will support you in mapping um, the ecosystem of yeah, relevant uh, um, yeah, or user network as well of, of farmers and in across the region where you're operating, um, as well as partners that you may need to work with. Then you will have to select pilot sites where we're actually going to implement um, the solution. And then we will support you as well in revising um, a pricing model uh, so that you can actually implement a servitization business model um, with your company. And yeah, then we will set up the digital twins and sensors. And then first onboard the operators. And lastly, uh, which is the ultimate goal, onboard all the farmers as well in using um, the, the cold rooms and the app. Okay, then, yeah, just quickly, I would like to tell you as well how um, companies are selected. So there are five um, selection criteria. So overall, you should be eager and to implement the servitization business model as well as um, interested in using the Cultivate app. And then, yeah, of course, also willing to and dedicate um, the time to, to actually participate in all the, the, set, the weekly sessions, uh, which will also include um, a bit of homework um, on a weekly basis. So basically, yeah, you have to have the capacity and resources to, to set aside the time for this. And um, then another key criteria is uh, the type of technology that you're using. So your cold room should be uh, powered by uh, solar or other renewable energy systems. And we are also putting an emphasis on the integration of gender equality and sensitivity into operations and will provide you with technical assistance that will help you to, um, yeah, for instance, integrate gender equality into uh, your human resources. Um, yeah, moving on. I am, yeah, so the application deadline is uh, the 25th of November. So, yeah, please um, apply until then. Uh, if you have any questions, um, you can also uh, write us an email to our info mail and um, yeah, we will be very happy to have you on board and uh, yeah, move along with us on this journey. Now I will open the floor to Roberta who will give you an app tour. Yeah, hi everybody. Um, very nice. I will just share my screen so that you can basically see how the app looks like in real life. Um, oops. Yeah, so here we are, just give me a second. So the first time that you um, open the Cultivate app, it looks like this. So it basically has um, two options to start with. If it's the first time that you or anybody else from your company is downloading the app, what you can do is you can basically register your company and sign up. So you just have to answer a couple of questions and this will allow uh, us to record your company and yourself as a first user. And the other options that you have, if you have already done this uh, at least once, are basically to sign in. And there are three user types. So the first user type is what we call a registered employee. What we mean by this is basically somebody who is in the management team of the company. So somebody who's overseeing the operation as, for example, the CEO of the company. And uh, this is a person who would be interested in, for example, understanding what is happening at the different cold rooms without being physically present there 100% of the time. And the main tasks of the registered employees within the Cultivate app are to basically set up the company, set up the cooling units, 
invite other people to join, meaning other collaborators or the operators that are working at the cold rooms and assign the different operators to the rooms. And then what will happen is that um, the registered employees will be able to remotely monitor what is happening in all of the rooms, meaning um, in terms of temperature, in terms of occupancy, and in terms of check-in and check-out operations. So this would give you full visibility over the, um, uh, the environment, basically, at each of the rooms. The role that is uh, more important for, for the Cultivate app, meaning the person dealing with the day-to-day -day operations at the room is what we call the operator. And so this is the one I'm gonna use to log in so that you can see how the interface looks like. And again, this is basically a person that we imagine being physically present uh, at the room and dealing with all the room-related operations, as for example, interacting with the farmers or with the traders which are arriving at the cold room to um, check in or check out the produce. So after you log in, um, and it loads, <laughs> this is what you see. So basically you have a series, a dropdown where you can choose which is the unit you are interested in. Um, in this case, we would change to, for example, another unit. Um, and what you see appearing down after a second of loading is you will see what are the items that are currently in storage into the room, okay? And the, the way in which you can, you can read this, for example, is that in this case, there are three crates of bananas. They have been brought by a farmer or a trader who's called Lisa, and they have been in storage for one day. The color that you see, which is uh, matching this four days here, represent the remaining times uh, until a pickup is needed, meaning what is the remaining quality for the specific rates. So you see that the different, in this case, for example, potatoes will last very long in the cold room. So they have their green because you don't need to think about it right now. But for example, these two crates of guava, um, you would rather need to contact the farmer so that he can pick up, he or she can pick up the produce as quickly as possible so that it doesn't get spoiled. And how does this uh, work? The idea is that um, this information, it's calculated based on real-time temperature inside of the room. And you can monitor the real-time temperature going um, here to room condition. So what you see here, if you have connected sensors to uh, the sensors, temperature sensors in the room to the Cultivate app, which is something that we can, of course, support you with, is that you will be able to see basically how has the temperature um, behaved in the last week or so. And uh, the model, the shelf life model that runs in the background. And what it does is it basically uses the information about the temperature. It uses the information about which is the type of crop and what was the initial quality of this specific crop when it arrived at the room to then continuously calculate and update this number. Another thing that you can do here is you can monitor the occupancy of the room. So what you will see um, here, for example, is that right now my room is 66% full, and this is the prediction over the next days. And this can help you a lot in planning, basically, the operations at the room and helps the registered employee understanding what is happening at the different rooms. And now let's imagine there is a farmer that is arriving at my cold room and um, she wants to check in some apples. So how do we do? We start from this activity button here. Uh, we click on the, on the green uh, button, which is for check-in. We select the farmer, let's imagine Lisa, from the list. And then we add some crates. So she had some crates of apple. I don't remember how many. Let's say four of them. Um, we can adjust the, the weight if needed. And then uh, if she already knows for how long she's intending to store, we can edit here, but that's not mandatory. But let's say she knows the market is in two days from now. So she already knows that probably she will pick it up in two days. Uh, then we ask two more questions, which are basically important for us to understand which is the remaining, uh, which is the initial quality of the produce when it arrives at the room. Um, and by confirming, you will see here a summary. So of course you can also add more crates if you want. And then once this is done, you can confirm. And uh, you will see in a second that basically apples, this we can skip for the sake of time, that apples uh, have been added to your, uh, to your dashboard. 
which means that, as you see here, so there are these four crates and the shelf life, so the time to pick up has been calculated. So these apples um, are going to be good at this as the current temperature that is now for 34 days. And in a very similar way, you can do a checkout. So for example, let's imagine that this farmer arrives to pick up the, the guava crates. In that case, you can click on, on the item and then you can initiate a checkout here. You can decide if you want to, in this case, for example, check out both crates or only one crate. Let's imagine we want to check out both. Um, and then this is a summary, just to understand how much should this, this person pay, what's the payment method, and then you can um, set this, uh, this transaction as pay and complete. And in this way, the, the crates of Guava are now gonna be basically removed um, from, from this list. Um, Another thing that I, I don't want to go too much into details, but the other, only other thing that I want to show you, which I think is quite, uh, can be quite useful for reporting, is the fact that if you go in history, you can see basically all the transactions uh, that have been done in this room, which also means that you have a, a simple way here with the filtering to basically calculate which is the, the total revenue of, um, of the room in a specific uh, time period. Let's just... Um... Let this load for a second so that you can see actually <laughs> these in actions. Um, and so the idea here is the 3D, by using Cultivate, you can basically replace all the operations that are currently done manually. So on one side, there is, of course, more accountability and more transparency for all partners involved. And uh, on the other, uh, in the other hand, it's also, it's also useful for you to um, basically get insights about uh, the behavior at the room without the need of physically being, being there. Let me uh, run this again. And so, um, okay, I'll show you this um, when it comes, but just to not get stuck here, the, the other thing that I want to show you briefly is um, the third user type that we haven't, that we haven't talked about. Um, so by logging out, um, you probably remember from the beginning that there is a third user type. This is pooling users, meaning farmers or traders, anybody who's interested in using the room. And what they will be um, able to do in the next release of the app, which is coming in around a month, is that they will also be able to sign in if they have a smartphone. And in this case, they also are going to be able to, um, to see basically everything that we have seen also from, from their perspective. The way in which this is currently managed is that is the operator who's communicating with the cooling user and the app is sending some SMS to users that have a phone to inform them, for example, about what is the remaining shelf life uh, of the produce that they have in storage. And this is something that we do want to keep because we are aware of the fact that not everybody um, has a smartphone. And so in this way, we're trying to make the solution as inclusive as possible to provide also information via SMS for, um, for farmers or users that don't have a smartphone available at the moment. Um, I will close here. I want to mention, however, that the app is free to download. So you can just um, try it out for yourself. And of course, we are available in case you have questions or uh, specific, um, specific feedback that you would like to provide. And also that even though we have piloted uh, this project in India and Nigeria, the app is available in all countries. So you can try it out. Uh, and another thing is that here you can choose the language. So for now, there are three languages supported, but the idea is also that if you get selected for the incubator, we are working with you to basically translate the app to your local language if needed, so that uh, there are no obstacles to the adoption uh, as we move forward with the, with the incubator time, basically. I think that's it from my side. I will stop sharing my screen and uh, we are happy to get your questions about the incubator program or the app or anything else you would like to ask. Thank you very much, Roberta. Um, yeah, so there were a couple of questions um, in the chat. I will start with those. And um, of course, everyone is also welcome to raise their hand if they um, yeah, didn't want to type their question in the chat. And we will, um, of course, also answer your questions. So maybe starting with uh, Dr. Ikeyemba. I'm hoping I spelled this correctly. Um, who asked, uh, how does this project or process account for already existing infrastructure? 
how does this approach take into account the logistics? For example, say moving tomatoes from Jos to, from Jos to Lagos for export or for sales in Lagos. Um, I would say, Roberta, you, um, do you want to answer this question? Sure, happy to answer. Um, so the idea here is that when we started uh, developing this app, we cover the, the case of cold storage, like, like physical rooms, but then we are realized very quickly that actually uh, refrigerated transportation is something that is really relevant. And so what we have done from the app development perspective is that uh, you also have the possibility of following your produce as it gets transported, for example, from one room in a refrigerated truck and in the next room. Of course, uh, this doesn't mean that we are, so we are not implementing uh, the, the transportation ourselves, of course, but what we do uh, want, to, uh, want to do and the direction where we want to go is basically to make the, this app as part of an infrastructure of an ecosystem that, could, that um, covers basically the whole supply chain and not just the static cold room. Um, another thing that we are we are thinking of uh, going more like as an outlook for the future, not really relevant for the incubator itself, but is the idea that um, we would also um, we also understand that transportation is often a burden, and so one idea could be that um, if buyers could come to the room to sell the produce uh, to buy the produce from the farmers directly, this could spare the farmers themselves some uh, issues related to transport. Something I'd like to add here um, about existing infrastructure. So to apply to this incubator, it's not necessary to, necess to deploy new rooms necessarily. It's also possible to apply the Cultivate app on existing cold rooms. So if there are sites that you have that are, then it is possible to, um, to essentially apply um, and use that existing infrastructure as well. Thank you, Thomas and Roberta. Um, yeah, then we have another question um, also by Ikemba. Uh, so how does this local state of affairs play into the process dealing with long routes, bad roads, expensive cold storage logistics, or is the project or idea focused on smallholder farmers? Um, selling to habitants close to the vicinity. Perhaps Roberta could also answer this question. Yeah, I mean, as I was saying, I think we have covered um, part of it already. So there is no limitation in terms of um, what the project is, like what the, the app and the, you know, the business model innovations are focusing on. So we are very um, open also to you know to consider like different different cases um, and it's not necessarily so it has a focus on smallholders in the sense that um, we want to focus on making sustainable cooling more accessible for them but um, there is no like physical restrictions in terms of um, where the produce is then sold okay thank you Roberta and yeah, moving on to a question from Ahmed. So he asked, how do you ensure that the company will use highly efficient, environmentally friendly technology using low um, GP, a GWP refrigerant? And do you have criteria to assess that? I think Thomas will be well placed to answer this one. Sure. Happy to give some insights there. So the criteria that Serena showed before was general on technology. And just to keep it short in the presentation, but on the website, there is more detailed information on that criteria. And there's some criteria on the technology that are, well, on the source of the energy, so solar powered, these things, but also on the refrigerant being used. So obviously we want it to be zero ozone depleting, low toxicity, also low uh, global warming potential, and we prefer natural refrigerants. So it's an important criteria. So any company that applies and shows that they're using propane or any other natural refrigerant that works um, in, in the context of the specific country will definitely gain points compared to a company that does not uh, show the use of natural refrigerants. So thank you for that question.
Okay, we have another question from Dr. Ikeyamba. Uh, he's asking, how do you control the use of generators in Nigeria? And he knows a lot of refrigeration organizations that just use diesel. So how do we control this? Or is your value proposition uh, just the app? Um, Thomas, do you want to want to take this one? Uh, sure. So any company that wants to apply to the incubator uh, should be driving the systems on renewable energies. So we're not accepting any company that will be driving these rooms of diesel generators. Um, so that's what we can do. The app, there's no, we're not prohibiting anyone that operates a cold room on diesels to download the app and use it. This is not something with, that's within our our control, but we would not be encouraging this and we would also not be accepting the, that in, into our incubator. So that's um, our policy and we are promoting those companies that do not use uh, diesel generators. Okay. Then we have a following question um, on the app. So is, it, is the app free for download and is the utilization of it also free? Is there a premium use or in the near future um, want to be foreseen to be added? Roberta, over to you. Yeah, the app is totally free to download and to use. We are not, we don't have any commercial interest in um, in the app itself. And what we are also doing in December is actually that we are making the app open source. What this means is that if you do have the capacity within your company to also uh, use, host the app yourself and maybe integrate it with systems that you currently have in place, you are totally welcome to, to do that. So our goal is really to support in the implementation and the growth of companies that offer uh, cold storage. And so for that, we don't think that um, having like yeah, app that is paid or where the, app, the use is somehow restricted is, uh, is a good way to go. Thank you. Um, then we have a question from Patience. And the first one is, um, so as a company, that is projecting to have a solar powered cold room by the end of next year. Are there any actions we can take in the meantime, as far as the Cultivate app and the UBCCA incubator are concerned? Um, yeah, maybe answering this one first, or Thomas, over to you. Well, Sure, thank you for the question. So that's a very good question. I'm really excited that you will be uh, starting in, uh, to look into cold storage, solar cold storage. The fact that you don't have the infrastructure ready to be deployed right now means that you are not eligible to participate to the incubator right now because um, the month uh, this program will start in January or February and will last until April. So it won't be possible in this specific situation to, um, to actually pilot this. However, um, we are creating material that will, we call it the capacity bridging toolkit. So it's material that you can use to train your future operators and also to train the farmers that are using the cold room on what's the benefits of cold storage, how to use the app, what's paper use. So all this material that we will in part be sharing in the incubator is also accessible via uh, PDF documents and, and comic strips and videos. So what you could definitely do is already download the app, which is already available. You do not need to be part of the incubator to download the app and you can start using it um, and, uh, and, and uh, essentially look at the documentation that will be available soon. If you have any specific questions, if you're stuck in using the app, um, you can always write us an email. It's not because you're not part of the incubator that we won't be responding to your questions. Um, it just means that we have more time and capacity for the companies that are part of the incubator to actually handhold and take the time to really go through a detailed process. But any company that wants to adopt the app, we're really happy for this. So we're welcoming you to try it out and send us questions. And, um, and possibly by the time you have a new cold room, we might have space for new incubator companies and um, so please do not hesitate to reach out to us and keep this um, solution in mind for the time you have the cold room available. Um, I know there's a follow-up question to that that you also asked about 
why do we provide help to access infrastructure? So um, we do not directly uh, help with that. Um, we can ensure you that if you start looking into innovative business models like cooling as a service, then you will need to look at your financial structure. So that means how will you finance these cold rooms? How will you will you keep them on your own balance sheet, or will you work with, for example, a financial institution that will create that will create a we call them special purpose vehicles that will purchase the cold room on your behalf to free your balance sheet. So these things um, will be relevant for you, but you can have a look at documentation we prepared within the cooling as a service initiative um, where we talk about these things. So the website for that, and we can add it also in our follow-up email is uh, CAS, so C-A-A-S, uh, dash initiative.org and there's a lot of tools like a pricing model and these things and uh, it will be written right now in the in the chat i believe super so that's that's it for this question thank you very much thomas and um we have another question by dr anna um who's asking to store mixed fruits and vegetables for short periods um we should consider, besides crop temperature requirements, the ethylene sensitivity of the products being stored and relative humidity. So does the app take into account these parameters? Um, this is also an app-related question going to Roberta. Right, so we do know that uh, these are actually indeed important things to consider. Um, what we have is we, as part of the app, there is a knowledge hub, and this contains uh, right now information about for different crops, what's the optimal temperature and uh, at that temperature, how long will they last? And we're planning to integrate this in the near future with also more information, for example, about the ethylene, so that in the case of multi-commodity rooms, you have indications about which crops should or should not go together. And another thing that we're working on is to integrate, uh, to not only use the information from the temperature sensor, but also the relative humidity, because actually the models that run in the background to calculate the time to pick up are also sensitive to the relative humidity. So that's definitely a direction that we are very interested in uh, exploring and working on. Thank you, Roberta. And now I have another question here from Eugene um, Fezon. So is there a minimum of installation pilot sites required to apply? Um, no, basically, yeah, I mean, the minimum site is to have one site per, um, per um, operator. So that is essentially the minimum. Um, of course, we are happy uh, to, to have more, but um, uh, one is enough to be part of the program. And moving on to Eugene. Uh, question. Uh, so that's again on the app. Uh, she's asking, how is the app connected to the payment for crates? Um, Roberta, over to you. Okay. Um, apparently there was a mistake in the microphone. So I'm repeating the question. Um, how is the app connected to the payments for the crates? Over to you, Roberta. Yes, yeah, so as you maybe seen during the checkout right now, um, the we are not including, uh, we are not integrating basically payment systems within the app, which this means that either they're done in cash or if they're done with a credit card or with another system, some digital payment system, this is something that the company themselves should they take care of. What we do have is uh, the option at checkout to specify what's the payment type, because we thought that this can be uh, useful for you to then understand where is the money coming from when you are uh, when you are calculating basically the revenues. But we do have a plan to integrate this. But as you can imagine, this is a bit difficult to, to scale for all countries because uh, you know different countries have different systems. So we are looking in the to start with the countries in which we are doing the pilot, what would be the best um, methods for digital payment, basically, that we could easily integrate into the app. And then also depending on the incubator company selected, we can maybe think about developing this together. But that's not something that is going to be available when the incubator starts, but that's something we are um, thinking about.
Thank you. Um, we have here a question from Manish. Uh, is it necessary for those participating in the program to already have cold storage infrastructure in place or can it set it, can they set it up uh, during the program? Um, yeah, I mean, this has been explained uh, by Thomas previously. Um, the infrastructure yeah, can already exist and you can also uh, set it up as part of the program. Um, yeah, basically would mean that we would have to look into how this can be financed, et cetera. And um, yeah, I mean, as Thomas already said, we I think we've now posted a link in the chat um, where you can see how this has been done um, uh, at hand of a past example. Um, but yeah, we would, as part of the program, um, help you to yeah, identify ways to, to, to do this potentially. And then Manish also has a follow-up question. Can we, can we go to Akbar? Akbar has a question he needs to drop off. Sorry. Akbar, yeah. Uh Hey guys, hey. can you hear me? Yes, sorry. Uh, hi, yeah, thanks for the great presentation. So I just wanted to get some idea about some learnings you had from the hey, pilot you did. Unmuted, you can ask your question. Can you hear me? Yes, hi, please, Pepper, please continue. You, you can hear me, right? Yes, we do hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just from learning from your pilot, I mean, both in India and Africa. I mean, from a technology company's perspective, like, did you do any analysis on what is kind of the working capital requirement for a company to kind of set up a unit and because um, and run it maybe in a kind of rural village? Uh, and were there any other surrounding kind of issues uh, around kind of land rights and kind of asset security? So that was one of my questions. Um, the second, I think the logistics one, which I think Roberta answered about, you want to build in a um, like a, a module, if there is complete cold chain logistics um, available that you could probably track the material. So, so just first question about the working capital. The second one, one was again, similarly about, have you, ha have you got, did you collect any data on the effects of like thermal shock? Or once you take the produce out of the cold room, you know, was the quality maintained or did it deteriorate or how, how is it? Because from our experience, you know, sometimes a lot of vendors and some uh, buyers, they prefer not to kind of receive goods uh, coming from a cold room because they themselves don't have cold room infrastructure. So by the time by the time it's sitting in their shop or they're sitting in their kind of warehouse, the product then dramatically de deteriorates because you know, there's a thermal shock issue. So those are the two questions I want to ask. The third one was similar to Dr. Anna about, you know, putting products, which is mixed, because usually these uh, decentralized cold rooms, the single chamber cold rooms, right? Because otherwise it'd be too expensive to build multi-chamber cold rooms. So I think ethylene will be very important and uh, to kind of track and see which crops you can put next to each other, because they can cause a lot of damage if you put a ethylene sensitive crop next to a, a ethylene producer. So yeah, those were my questions. Yeah, thank you, Akbar. These are um, very good questions. I'll try to to be short on them. So on the working capital, um, we've seen that for a five ton room, so it depends obviously on the, the technology being used, but um, between 15,000 US dollar and 30,000 US dollar um, is the approximate investment we have seen. Um, the the land, we have seen different models in which either the land can be leased from the owner or it can be bought. Um, this depends as well if the cold room is a mobile container. There's some containers that you can easily move from one part to another, uh, which means you do not have to build an infrastructure. Um, this has some advantages and makes it easier to, to, to have these negotiations. Um, in the case they are set up on the at the farm level, it means the leasing agreements would be with the actual farmers, in some cases with the local farmer producing organizations. So these are quite site specific. So I think it's difficult to, to, to give you a general answer to, to, the, to the challenges there. But um, that's the approximate working capital we've seen. We are also uh, working on essentially a simple pricing model, um, which helps to understand also what are the costs to operate this. Obviously, if the room is solar powered, 
there's limited uh, operating costs except for uh, some maintenance costs and uh, paying someone who is there to to actually stand at the cold room um, so uh, the, the operating costs are relatively low compared to the investment costs and then obviously there will be some financial costs associated and the payback period depends a lot as well on the country so we've seen some regions where it within two years it can be paid back uh, in some regions where it, it requires there, there are, there's a need for subsidies because farmers can actually not afford the price that will pay back the room in an appropriate number of time so in some cases we've seen also government schemes where part of the room is subsidized or the government is willing to to essentially buy them the local governments buys the cold rooms so that they own them and then hire a company to maintain it so these are all different models that we have been looking at and the two other questions uh the thermal shock one is a very good point uh, we haven't looked into this in much detail as Roberta mentioned we're looking into integrating the possibility to to allow uh, transportation that means that we could track the sense the the temperature along the supply chain which would give data that could help to track these data, these thermal shocks so we could then for example understand when thermal shocks happened if at some point let's say the cooling system breaks down on the road um, this could be then tracked down and for how many for example let's assume we shift a, a crate from a cold room to a truck if we have the app connected both in the cold room and in the truck then we know when the crop was checked out from the room when it was checked in into the truck so we can know for example that it was sitting outside for 10 minutes or 20 minutes or two hours and this will have an impact on the quality of the crop and we can we can then make some assumptions with outside temperature and quantify that impact so the idea here here is also to collect the data that improves or optimizes these logistics. And the final question about the, the multi-commodity crops and how to store. So one thing we're doing um, is, well, Roberta mentioned this already, but creating these essentially models, not only of the, the twin, the fruit, the fruit itself, so not a digital twin of the single fruits, but of the whole rooms, which would then help to understand where are the regions that are warmer or colder so that operators can better choose where to place the crops because we've seen that often this is an experience that lacks on the ground um, and then crops are mixed in a way that might not be optimal um, right now we're looking more at the temperature part not the ethylene but this is something that we hope to to include in the future um, and and then help the decision making of the operators as well yeah that was it for this question and yeah, happy to follow up via email like that as well. Thank you, uh, Thomas, for this elaborate answer. And um, yeah, we have two uh, last questions, uh, which we uh, will take now. And um, one is from Dr. Ikeyamba. Um, so how do we ensure that local companies are actually adhering to the criteria that we set? Is it possible to claim that they ad adhere to criteria, but these might be difficult to monitor. Um, Thomas, would you like to answer this one again? Yeah, so we will for sure request all of this information in the form. There's a form online that requests this, and we will be verifying that these criteria are respected. So we will be requesting some uh, some proof. So for example, is your technology actually using this or that refrigerant? It's quite easy to just ask for the, the demonstration, this product, product specifications. Um, we would also ask for some references. Uh, we would like to see if there's articles or so any material you have to show what you have, what you're claiming will help us. Um, maybe you have an article that's about your, your pilot site in this specific country we can have a look at. And uh, also we will be conducting interviews before we select uh, to confirm our understanding. Um, we do not plan to conduct an audit on every company, um, but we will be definitely checking in that uh, the claims are actually true. Thank you, Thomas. And um, maybe adding to this, like regarding the, the gender criteria, we um, see this more as like continuous improvement criteria where you are uh, more expected to, to yeah, express your, the willingness to, to actually um, yeah, spend some time in uh, yeah, integrating gender equality and sensitivity into the operations. And we will support you in, um, in achieving this uh, over the course of the program. Um, 
yeah so then let's move on to our last question um from france or france uh so when will the open source be available for customization i would um direct this question to roberta yeah, I typed in the chat just now that the, we are planning to do this by the end of the year and that uh, we're also going to provide some resources for the deployment and um, yeah, but just to um, explain a bit how the code can be used um, and that are all going to be available on our website, which is uh, yourvcca.org. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much, everyone. These were really, really uh, good questions. I hope uh, this helped you um, to yeah, get a better overview of what the incubator is about. And um, yeah, please feel free to, to write us if you have any more questions. Um, we will surely answer those. Uh, we will also send you the recording of this webinar. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. Uh, please apply. Again, the deadline is on the 25th of uh, November. And um, yeah, we look forward to receiving your applications. Thank you very much and uh, have a good day.